Now, administrative units are really awesome, and you will be asked about administrative units on the MS-102 exam. So I want you to understand like what they are and what purpose that they uh, solve. What, what business need do they cover? If you have uh, several locations, let's say, or several departments. So in this example of this slide, we've got an HR department, we've got a finance department, we've got an IT department and a marketing department. And uh, we want to have people who are performing administrative tasks or assigned administrative roles, but we want them scoped to that specific department. So in other words, for, for whatever reason in this organization on this slide, they say, look, we're going to dedicate a, a certain number of IT people. We're going to dedicate them to the finance department. So they're going to be the finance department's IT people. And we're going to dedicate a different set of uh, IT people to the marketing department and a different set to the IT department and a different set to HR. Maybe it makes sense to do that. That's at least for this slide. Well, that's difficult to do uh, if you just assign someone, for example, the global administrator role and they're in Microsoft 365, they're the global administrator role, or let's say, let's even take it down a notch, the SharePoint administrator role. What you can do is you could say, look, the we can create an administrative unit and we can have a query that says only grab people that are part of the finance department. And if they are, they fall under the administrative unit of finance. And then we can assign a SharePoint administrator who will only be the SharePoint administrator over uh, people involved in the finance department. They won't be a SharePoint administrator for the IT department, or they won't be a SharePoint administrator for the HR department, but they will be if they're dealing with people from the finance department. So it's a way, if I can kind of zoom in here, it's a way of, let me move my face out of the way. It's a way of saying, yes, we're going to assign these different roles, but we're going to scope them to a specific administrative unit. That's the idea. And if you do that, then the scope of where they have the ability to perform their administrative roles are that administrative unit. That's what administrative units are. That's an example of how they might be used, but there's many other ways to do it. So over here is a screenshot, sorry about that, of the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. And I'm down here under roles, under administrative units. And you can add units here. You can see I've created one for each department to do that exact um, de demo for the slide. And it lets you subdivide your organization into any unit you want and then assign specific administrators that can only manage that unit. So that's that's what they are. That's that's a problem that they that they solve. In a way, it's it, in a certain way, in my opinion, it's kind of taking like least privilege to a, a whole new level. So here you see the admin units uh, and you can go in and create them. And then you once you have that, you can delegate administration. You can even delegate administrative partners. If you have a partner organization, you can restrict them in scope to just a specific administrative unit or even administrative units. So that's the topic of administrative units. Um, that's what they are, that's how they work. And you'll almost certainly be asked about scenarios on your exam where using administrative units would be like the only thing that would solve that. Like we wanna have help desk administrators only, uh, only be able to service people in the IT department. What would be a solution? And you see one of the options is to create an administrative unit for IT users, that would be the solution. All right, next thing we're gonna talk about is assigning roles. So let's.